the headlines. Christine Dawood, the wife of Shahzada Dawood and the mother of 19-year-old Suleiman Dawood, who both died in the Titan submersible, speaks exclusively to the BBC. When we passed the 96 hours mark, that's when I lost hope. And that's when, when I even then I sent a message to my family on shore. I said, I'm preparing. One day on from a rebellion by the Wagner mercenary group in Russia, the whereabouts of its leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, and the Russian president are both unknown. America's top diplomat says the attempted mutiny by Wagner fighters shows cracks emerging in Vladimir Putin's authority. And a vast crowd at Glastonbury enjoying every single note of Sir Elton John's last live concert in the UK. Sir Elton John has performed his final UK show with a headlining performance at Glastonbury. He was joined by four surprise guests and his final song was Rocket Man. Sir Elton is nearing the end of his final tour after a 52-year career. People across England, Scotland and Wales were unable to call 999 for around two hours this morning after a technical fault. BT, which manages the service, says the glitch has now been resolved. Sierra Leone's main opposition leader says that soldiers have opened fire on his party's headquarters as votes are counted in the country's presidential election. Samura Kamara described it as an assassination attempt. It is unclear why the troops were deployed. In Sweden, one person has died. Nine others have been injured, including children, after a roller coaster accident in the capital, Stockholm. The incident happened at the 140 year old Grona Lund amusement park. Eyewitnesses say that the park's jetline roller coaster passed partially derailed during a ride. The park was evacuated and it will be closed for at least a week while police investigate. Now, the annual Hajj pilgrimage, pilgrimage has begun in Saudi Arabia, and this year it's expected to break records with the most number of attendees in history. Yasmin Khatan Duwan has more. It's almost 40 degrees in Mecca, but the heat won't deter these crowds. The men in their seamless robes and women in their religious garments, all in a sacred state known as the Ihram. The Hajj begins with the Tawaf, the circling of the Kaaba. A pillar of the Islamic faith, taking part in the pilgrimage at least once is understood to be an obligation for those who can afford the trip and are healthy enough to carry out its rights. I can't describe my feeling. May God grant me the blessing of completing the Hajj. I hope everyone is able to perform it. Thank God I was wishing to perform the Hajj a long time ago and God granted it to me. The rituals for the Hajj date back to the Prophet Muhammad's farewell pilgrimage and remain unchanged to this day. The Hajj will see the pilgrims travel to various sites. At Mount Arafah, pilgrims will gather for one of the most important days in the Islamic calendar. And this year, that gathering is expected to break records as the largest in history. More than 2.5 million Muslims are expected to take part in the Hajj pilgrimage, as COVID-19 restrictions that were in place since 2020 have this year been fully relaxed. At the height of the pandemic, just 10,000 people were permitted to participate, with that number rising to 59,000 in 2021. And last year, that number going up to 1 million people. And for some of those pilgrims, this year has been especially significant. Here we are praying and we ask all Muslims to take this opportunity to pray for stability and safety in the Muslim world and to pray for their brothers in Sudan, that the country stabilizes and people live in safety and security. This time next week, many of the new Hajis will be making their way home, having been on one of the most significant journeys of their life. Yasmin Khatoun Diwan, BBC News.